This is one of two COVID simulations you will use to explore the spread of an infection in a population of 500 people. You'll need to initialize the model before running it by pressing this setup button. The initial population will be distributed across households of different sizes. Households are represented as gray squares, and circles with black dots in them represent students, while those without represent adults. You can change the number of initial students in the population by adjusting the value of this slider. You'll need to press setup again in order for those changes to take effect. When you press go pause, time will start to elapse in the simulation. These two monitors help you keep track of the number of days that have elapsed and the number of hours in that day. There are only 12 hours per day in this simulation rather than 24 in order to help speed up the simulation results by skipping over the part of the day where many people are either sleeping and or no longer traveling into and out of other places in their community. During the 12 hours of the day that are being simulated for this model run, we can see students traveling to school during hour one of the day, remaining at school for eight hours, and then traveling back to their household after that. You'll see this repeat only for weekdays, not on weekends. As students move to school during weekdays, you'll see a gray dot appear in the household they left from. This represents a spot in the household where they live that they'll return to occupy at the end of the day. You may be able to see the movement of a single student more clearly over time by pressing this Watch a New Student button. Each time you press it, the simulation randomly selects a new student to watch. Pressing this button resets the view. Let's get ready to run the model once with some infected people in it. To do that, we'll need to make some changes and press setup again. So let's first pause the model using the go pause button so that we can see what those changes are before the model starts running and it doesn't immediately start running once we press setup. You can adjust the number of initial infected people using this slider. You can also adjust whether the model continues running or automatically stops when it reaches a certain point using this drop down menu. Let's adjust it so that it automatically stops when there are zero infections in the population. Let's press setup to see the effects of these changes. Notice now that there are colored dots in the simulation. Red dots represent symptomatic cases. Pink dots represent asymptomatic ones. There are five of these colored dots in the simulation now to represent our five initial infected people. All of these initial infections are assumed to be in day one to three of the 14 day period it takes for the infection to end for each person. Let's press go pause now to run the model to watch what happens over time. At the end of the 14 day infection period, one of two things may happen to a person. They may turn green, in which case, they are recovered from the infection and are now immune to future infections, or they may die, in which case an X will appear on their spot in their home. There's a 3.6% chance that the infected person will die rather than recover from the infection. This is based on the average mortality rate reported for the COVID-19 infections as of August 2020. In the simulation, infections can only be transmitted from one person to another within a place, such as a home or a school. And they cannot be transmitted when a person is moving between places. Infections do not get transmitted across black line boundaries between places. They can only get transmitted within the place a person is in. The default chances of spreading the disease to another person in a place is one out of 200 or half of a percent per hour. So, more time in contact increases the chances of transmission. But various mitigation settings, such as everyone wearing masks in a place, will reduce those chances of transmission. The default setting for the schooling plan is such that students are attending school in person. You can change those schooling plan settings at any time the model is running. The effects will take place the following day in the simulation. To fast forward time, you can slide the model speed slider to the right. To slide it to left, we'll slow it back down. Let's keep it running in fast forward mode until we reach the point that there are zero infections in the population. Notice the model automatically stopped. It says I can also change the auto stop setting to disable this automatic stopping point to continue the model run if I wish. 
These monitors below provide some important information about the number of people who haven't been infected yet, the total number of cases so far, the maximum number of daily cases, and the number of deaths in the population. The graph will provide you other important information, particularly related to its shape and whether the changes you are making are having any effect on flattening this curve. You can read additional data from the curve by hovering over the cursor at any point on the graph. Notice the numbers appear along the X and Y coordinates as I do so. So I can tell, for example, at this point, day 23, there were 66 infections in the population. The simulation run automatically stopped when there are zero infections, and that might be a useful setting for you for comparing how long an infection takes in one trial versus another. But you might also find it useful to compare graphs between two model runs that are set to run the exact same amount of time. You can do that by adjusting this model setting to a specific number of weeks, at which point the model will stop running. Since every time you press setup, you will get a different household selected for where the infection occurs in, and there's an element of chance for whether the infection spreads between people in any place at any given hour, you may want to run multiple model runs and multiple trials to test what the outcomes are in general before changing any of the other variables in the simulation.